What's going on, everybody? I've got a pretty important post that I want to break down and give my thoughts on because this is something that's going to affect every single player of the game. It's an update to balancing in MCOC. In the coming months, we're going to be introducing a new champion rating system to help better visualize the strengths and weaknesses of any given champion, giving you all a better understanding of the champion at a glance. Coinciding with this new rating system, we're creating a new rebalancing process that will apply to all new champions coming to the contest. Rebalancing meaning, um, you know, buffs or also potentially nerfs. Uh, this new balancing cadence means that reworks for older champions will slow somewhat, but will still occur. Which, uh, man, that kind of hurts to hear because the reworks for champions, that's been something that, um, you know, players have been enjoying for sure, but... Moving on, uh, these new balancing initiatives will be spearheaded by an expanded champion balancing team here at Kabam. The newest recruit to the team is a beloved community member will make themselves known when they feel the time is right. So this post actually came out yesterday and I recorded some thoughts on it. But, um, you know, since then, since I didn't uh, get a chance to post my video yesterday, uh, we have this this uh, tweet from Jay Nick saying, hey, folks, been pretty quiet over the last little while. So here's an update. The new balance designer that's referenced in the forum post is me. So, uh, Jay Nick, if you're not familiar with him, uh, awesome dude. He is a very experienced player of the game, uh, you know, in like top 10 alliances for both Alliance Quest and Alliance War. Uh, so the dude's a veteran. He has some uh, YouTube videos, but I think he stopped posting videos uh, uh, you know, some time ago and, you know, you could still find videos on his channel, I believe for, uh, you know, Alliance War, if you want to get a feel for, um, just how he is as a player. And this is something that I think is going to be great for the game. I think Jay Nick, it, you know, brings a lot more confidence to this than, um, to be honest, uh, I would have, uh, otherwise, um, just because there's a lot in here that, that I, I don't know, man. I just maybe don't think is is the best way to go about things, but um, I think Janik is a great addition to the team, uh, and I'm sure between Janik and Kabam John, who's also uh, a very good player, you know they can they can they can work things out uh, hopefully for the best. But let's continue on and get into some more of the details here. Now that we've kind of established that there's going to be a rating system and a rebalancing uh, system in place, so. Let's talk about the rating system first. Um, one huge piece of feedback we have received from a wide range of summoners is that currently it's hard to know what is and what is not intended when it comes to champion balance. Now, to be honest, they could have just cut out this uh, champion balance part. It's hard to know what is and what is not intended in Marvel Contest of Champions. Uh, when, you know, there's a, a slew of bugs affecting things, when uh, champion descriptions are not always the most clear, um, when, uh, you know, things like positive nodes, something that should be helping you, get disabled by reducing the opponent's uh, ability accuracy, when you think, wait a minute, shouldn't that only be reducing, like, abilities that would uh hurt me kind of thing like you know there's certain things about this game that you're just like wh why does it work this way is it supposed to work that way is that a bug i can't tell so it's not just champion balance it's mcoc in general that uh can be quite the confusing experience at times but um i also do agree with this that yeah champion balance um in itself uh is confusing too uh, there are some champions out there that feel like they have no real purpose in the game. And I'm not just talking about champions that came out in 2015. I'm talking about Guillotine, a champion that just got reworked that feels like she doesn't really have a, a purpose in the game. And I'm sorry to the Guillotine fans out there. Um, right now, her purpose is that she looks pretty cool. Uh, and that's it. Pretty uh, disappointing uh, rework, right? So... Um, yeah, is that champion supposed to be bad? Is that what we're going to be told with this new rating system? Let's find out uh, how they're going to be uh, going about this. So they're going to be, uh, you know, measuring damage output, survivability, utility, and ease of use. And I swear to you, I had no idea Kabam was working on something like this. It was only a few days ago that I started, um, you know, jotting down some uh, criteria for a rating system that I was going to be working on that was inspired by Ludum Taters, that I was getting feedback uh, and input from... Uh, you know, uh, the, the stream that I did and comments and stuff like that. So uh, I don't know what this means for my own rating system. I'm not sure if, if it's um, going to be necessary anymore, but um, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it'll still be a good thing to do. Maybe it'd be better to focus time elsewhere. I don't know. 
Um, but they go on to give an example here. They say Cole Obsidian is a great champion with high damage output, but not as much utility. So you'd have a 5 out of 5 in damage, but closer to a 1 or 2 for utility. Magic, on the other hand, is a champion with high utility and ease of use, but a lower damage rating. So, man, um... Let's back up here and just talk about what this means for the game overall. Um, just having a, a, a rating system in game. Uh, let's let's think about this. Is this actually a good thing? Um, well, okay. So if a player downloads the game because it's Marvel and maybe they just saw a new show on Disney Plus, because isn't there a new sh Disney show like every other day or something like that? Or maybe they just uh, came from watching Spider Man and they saw, oh, Spider Man's in this game. Cool. I'll download it. Let's let's check it out. Let's see how it is. Um, one of the, one of the biggest questions I get from newer players is just like, you know, which champions are good, which champions, uh, should I invest resources in and stuff like that. And it seems like Kabam is maybe trying to solve that, uh, directly in game, but in solving something like that directly in game, that prevents a player from, uh, looking elsewhere, prevents a player from turning to YouTube, um, from going to the subreddit or joining uh, discord or line groups. Essentially, it, it means that they don't have to be part of the community. You can play this game without being part of the community. And, you know, I mean, is that better overall for the game? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily better for the community though. I would, I would argue probably not. Uh, probably not better for the community and it's you know the community that keeps people playing this game for the most part i'm sure there's people that have never seen a youtube video that still log into this game every day uh, and all that but for many of us that that you know are part of these communities and have been in an alliance for you know however long it's it's one of the biggest uh, you know staying factors of this game when uh you know there's other bugs and other issues with the game that would potentially push people away we stick around because this is what our friends are doing this is this is where our friends are at and even in the times where things aren't that great well at least we're suffering together you know uh so like i don't know anything that could potentially slow the the the, the growth of the community um especially as more and more people kind of exit the community and, and stop playing the game i see that as something that could potentially be detrimental to the game um, so is there going to be positive benefits to a system like this? Uh, you know, yeah, sure. There's, it's a trade-off, right? I think there's going to be some positive, some potential negative. It's kind of hard to say until we see it uh, in place. Um, but I think anything that is uh, maybe questionable, um, to, you know, growing the community or something, uh, maybe time is just better spent elsewhere when there's other issues going on in game. I don't know if we necessarily, you know, needed something like this. This isn't what uh, was going to save the contest, you know? So, I don't know, man. I, uh, to be honest, I, I kind of wish that this was not going to be a thing. Um, I think it's also just part of the game is figuring out which of these champs is which of these champs are actually you know worth ranking up which of these champs is going to help you out i think that's that's a core part of the experience so like kabam's job is to design and create these tools and then it's up to the player to figure out how best to use them and that's not necessarily something that's going to be taken away uh per se but you know again the biggest question that I get while streaming is like, oh, which one of these champions uh, should I rank up? Here's where I'm at in the game. And, you know, it, it kind of kind of uh, eliminates some of that discussion. And, um, you know, it's just Kabam doing the job uh, for the players, essentially, by, uh, you know, creating this system. So uh, I, I, I kind of rather it just be left up to the community. And I'm not just saying that because I was working on something myself. I barely put, uh, you know, any time into a system like this. It, it's, it doesn't really uh, bother me or affect me to do this or not do this. I just thought it would be, uh, you know, something cool. But, um, yeah. So, I, I don't know, man. It just feels like this was not necessarily what uh, the game needed. They're, they do tie this system into, um, you know, talking about the rebalancing, though. So, let's, let's move on here and talk about the rebalancing side of things. So, champion balance will work in a six-month cadence from the release of a new champion. One-third of that time will consist of that champion being in the hands of experienced players and will include back-and-forth feedback between the community and development team. 
This change to balancing also means that over time, we bolstering and expanding our beta program to allow more summoners the opportunity to interact with new champion updates as much as possible. And this part's really cool. If there's anything in this um, uh, in this post that I that I really like, it's it's this expanding the beta program, um, where currently it's it's mostly content creators that are in the beta. Um, it's not exclusively, but it's mostly. Uh, and yeah, just expanding that to, um, you know, other veterans of the game um, that will be able to, you know, share feedback and stuff like that. That's cool, man. Um, having, you know, more feedback uh, to send Kabam's way. Always a good thing. Uh, after release, the Champions Live data will be reviewed for three months. This is not a new addition, but has only been done behind the scenes for the most part. After that period, changes will be made off of the collected data and put on the beta server for further testing and feedback collection. Changes will live on the beta server for two months, where we will be collecting player feedback at this time. The updated Champion will then be released to the live game. So, just as an example, they say if they release a champ on March 17th, the data collection will happen between March and mid-June, changes to the live beta server between June and mid-August, and then changes released to the public in late August. Now, when I look at this, my first thought is that, um, okay, don't invest in a champion released in March until late August. Um, because up until then, it's fair game, anything can happen with this champ. Are they going to be changed? Am I going to be throwing away these resources that, uh, you know, worked so hard to get in a champion that is um, just going to be changed? Um, even if it's not a big change. You know, at one point they, they mention, uh, you know, the Cold City and Namor changes. And this is a statement that I 100% disagree with, uh, where it says, While Cold City or Namor's changes were initially seen as majorly negative, um, summoners soon found that the changes were not major and continue to use those champions to this day. So, first off, the Cold Obsidian changes, I think, were good. Uh, I think that was kind of a, a positive benefit to the champion. <clears throat> he could have used maybe a little bit more love, maybe some physical resistance or something like that, in my opinion. But, um, overall, I think it was fine, um, the way that they changed his, his ramp up. Uh, it did feel more like a rebalancing. Namor, on the other hand... Um, they say here again, uh, it was seen as majorly negative, right? Actually for Namor, it was, it was quite the opposite. When I saw the changes, I was like, well, why is this even happening? It, it, it doesn't feel like it needs to happen. It feels like, yeah, it's something relatively small. So it's not going to stop me from playing Namor, but still I question like, why, why, why is it happening? It's, it, he's not, you know, the, 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 the changes that were being made to the champion, what, like, it wasn't something that was game breaking. It wasn't something that, uh, you know, he wasn't uh, more powerful than already, you know, other existing champions in the game and things like that. And I thought it was a, a fairly minor change that was just going to be sort of one of those things that I'm just like, Ugh, but I keep playing Namor anyway, right? The thing is, that's not what happened. The thing is, I thought that it was a small change, not a, not a major one, but it turned out to be a major one, or at least having major impact on my enjoyment of Namor. Um, something so small as, as like, you know, changing his regen, lowering his regen, and lowering his ramp up speed, it actually made me not really want to play Namor anymore. Um, and yes, he's still useful in some situations like, you know, against Electro or against, the, you know, Terax in um, uh, the Grandmaster's Gauntlet, for example, right? He still has his use in the game, um, and he's a high prestige champion to boot, but, um, you know, I used to play Namor just for fun. Like, when the champion came out, I was going through Realm of Legends just for fun. I didn't even need potions anymore at that point. You know, I'd be on call with other people as they're, like, clearing act content uh, on their streams and just playing Namor in Realm of Legends because I was having a good time with the champ. Um, after those changes, like, no, man, it, I, I've tried to force myself to play Namor in quests and stuff like that. And like I said, he's still good. I still want to get him as a six star on my account because I do still think he has a purpose in the game. But, you know, such a minor change had such a big impact on my enjoyment of the champion. So it's actually kind of the opposite of, of what this statement is saying. So I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't necessarily think that uh, it's... All bad that uh, there's, you know, this rebalancing initiative, but um, just judging by the past and the decisions that were made and um, just my overall feelings about these changes. Like, I'm someone who welcomes nerfs, 
and, and other balance adjustments. And I think that's because I, I, I largely come from like a PvP, a player versus player uh, gaming background where that's just what happens, right? Because if something is, is overpowered in like a like a story game, right? It doesn't really matter. Okay, so you, you beat the, the story boss a, a little bit it was a little bit easier than intended. Big whoop. But in, in a player versus player game, when something is, is overpowered, then that has like a real negative experience for the other player who's going up against that, right? So I like there to be a tighter balance in a player versus player game. So yeah, uh, balance is something that I've always um, wished was a bit better in MCOC. It's just so incredibly hard to achieve in this game. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if, if, if this is uh, necessarily uh, going in the right direction for MCOC, um, to be honest. Um, they, they go on to say that uh, we believe this process... Uh, actually, let me, let me read this part too, because this talks about the rating system. This is where the new rating system comes into play. Using these new ratings, we'll compare live data of the characters to the original goals of their ratings uh, in the ratings, and if needed, balance the champion based on the difference between the new and old data. So... Um, if a champ is, 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 uh, <laughs> you know, rated as a four out of five in damage, but players feel like it's a two out of five or their, or their data shows that it's a two out of five, they're going to up the numbers. Um, but again, it's so weird of like, there's, you know, just telling us this rating system, uh, seems so bizarre. It seems very unnecessary, but anyway, um, we believe that this process is an improvement because it is more inclusive of the community than we have been in the past and take away the mystery of, uh, or uh, will they, won't they, of champion balance changes. So I don't think that this uh, takes that mystery away at all. I think as it stands right now, most people understand that, hey, balance changes, they don't really happen unless something is truly game-breaking. So someone like Hercules, um, you know, even as powerful as he is, arguably too powerful, depending on who you talk to. Um, I don't think there's any doubt, or at least there's no doubt for me, like, no, the dude's not getting changed. Um, you know, when they were designing the champion, that, that was like the words that came out of Kabam's mouth of like, yeah, this dude's supposed to be really strong. Uh, that's intended. And unless it's like, you know, just stupidly game breaking, uh, maybe something that they overlooked. Well, no, it's not going to be changing. So I kind of had that confidence. Okay. Nothing's going to change, but now this will they, or won't they, it's being created by this system. Um, because again, this is, this is affecting every single champion that's getting released and it's not going to, you know, we're not going to have a final answer on the champ until six months later. Um, so Oh, man. Uh, it's just, I don't know if this is what the game really needed uh, at the moment, you know? Kind of kind of hurts. Kind of feels uh, a little bit bad with the current state of things. Um, but okay, let's let's talk about uh, the, the, the last thing that was kind of stated here of slowing down on reworks, which, again, man, the reworks, that was something that people really look forward to. Um, they say reworks are not going anywhere. However, with the new balancing initiative outlined above, there may not be two major or medium reworks a month moving forward. If a champion releases and we are content with where they have landed as far as power and design goals, the team will then use that extra development time to work on other balancing initiatives like new reworks. We don't have any major reworks lined up for February, but you can look forward to a value update for Psycho Man to go live in March. So, oh boy. So no uh, balance updates in January. Um, I, it's because of the holidays, right? I, so I understand that. Um, you know, people take time off for the holidays and stuff like that. Uh, listen, the people making MCOC, they're not robots. They have lives too. So I get that. But then there's no reworks for February either, which, oh, that hurts. Uh, and then only one for March. So the first quarter of 2022, um, only having one uh value update for 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 one champion that's it so yeah man i think timing is is kind of important if there were other content being released uh in january or february that's one thing where it's like okay you know we've got we've got this and this coming to the game uh and unfortunately there's no rework so people would still have something to do it right now it feels like people just don't have anything to do um you know uh, there's there's definitely content, like a, a back catalog of content that 
you know some players are going through but for for other players it just feels like uh the game is pretty stale at the moment there's just not much to do um and it kind of you know p part of the issue is uh is there's no like persistent game mode that is in a healthy state at the moment um so like alliance quest i mean it's just a it's a chore um i don't necessarily mind alliance quest even though I'm not in an alliance doing alliance quest at the moment i never really minded it but um you know it's it's also not the most exciting thing it's just a good place to get catalyst um alliance war some people love it some people hate it but whether you love it or hate it let's let's face it man there's it's just been issue after issue after issue for months and months at this point um that have canceled seasons delayed seasons um canceled individual wars and in seasons and just it's it's kind of a nightmare to deal with uh and then still don't have the solo competitive mode so it's just a timing issue where like you know, I get that there's different people working on different things within the game, but to hear something like this, that, uh, you know, the reworks, they are, uh, you know, I I'm assuming they're, they were delayed because of, um, you know, maybe getting uh, Janik up to speed and, you know, that taking some time to do uh, and, you know, working on this new system and putting this in place and stuff like that. But I feel like, that really could have waited uh, until the game was in a better state to release something like this and just put that on the back burners and continue to work on reworks. It's just the timing of it all is, is not great. Um, let's put it that way. It's really not great. Um, in April, we're moving back to our two updates per month, so that's good news at least, uh, but we'll not guarantee what kind of updates they will be, overhaul, moderate, or value only. We're also spending some time to give some more love to champion animation updates, so look forward to animation and ability updates uh, coming for Gamora, Storm, and Explode Dead Force. So, I'm excited for this. Uh, the animation updates, I always see those as kind of a bonus, where, um, you know, I, I mean the they've said in the past that animation updates can take a lot longer than you know ability tuning which uh, i mean i'm sure they both take uh, quite a bit of work but um i always just saw animation updates as a bonus and uh in particular i'm looking forward to seeing what they do with storm i hope it's not just her basic hits that change uh i hope it's her special attacks that change because i don't know i just feel like there's a lot of really cool things they could do with a character like storm um so yeah I i'm looking forward to something like that but um, all right, they talk about why balancing is important, and um, let me go ahead and read this section here. It says, in the past, we've tried different ways to address balance in the contest, but I've worked to improve our approach based on response or other factors. Balancing new champions is, an important, uh, is important for the health of the contest and also allows our designers to continue to innovate and try new and interesting mechanics uh, with more confidence, knowing that if something doesn't come out the way we had intended, we can go back to address that. Many of the most popular champions in the contest are those champs where we try different approaches to their abilities, but without the safety net of being able to take a second look, we often find ourselves being more conservative with our approach. Uh, we want players to be excited about the possibilities every new champion presents, and a new balance system gives us the opportunity to be more ambitious with design goals or tune up champions that maybe were not ambitious enough. So I do agree with this part here where, yeah, if you don't have the ability to you know, to tune something post-release. I mean, that that's... Like, if you put yourself in the perspective of a champion designer, what would you do? Uh, would you be too afraid to that you were going to release, like, some game-breaking champ like Quake, and that has, like, a cascading effect on the rest of the game? Or would you say like oh man i don't know if i want that kind of responsibility let me let me shoot straight down the middle release a champ that uh you know has pretty good damage pretty good utility but it's kind of just a standard champ um i yeah i i feel like a lot more of those more standard champs do get released as a result of uh, of this so i agree with this and i do think that is a positive uh you know part of this system is that it will allow the developers to um you know, to kind of let their imaginations run a little bit more wild uh, and release some potentially more exciting uh, champions to the game. It's just, man, six months, it's kind of a long time. And, and time goes by fast in MCOC, you know? Six months, dude, it, it feels like it feels like that happens in, in the blink of an eye sometimes. But still, six months for every champion where it's like, okay, 
let's review their initial release. And then uh, there's going to be another review six months later of like, okay, is the, it, what were those resources wasted that were invested in the champ early on? Or, or were they actually useful? Um, I'm probably just going to sit on resources. Not that I get the champs that early anyway. It's hard to get champs within the first six months to begin with. But um, yeah, man, it just, it, it, it kind of, uh, I don't know. It, again, I just don't know if this is necessarily the right time for this type of system to be introduced when the contest is already struggling in other ways. And uh, I know that, you know, um, again, there's different people working on different areas of the game, so it's not like you could just say, don't do this, fix the bugs instead. But I do think you can do things like, okay, don't implement this system continue rolling out reworks until other people fix the bugs and then when the game's in a in a more healthy state you know then maybe uh come out with a system like this whereas right now it just feels like the negativity uh these systems they're kind of just piling on top of each other um so yeah um I don't know. That's my thoughts on it all. Uh, there might have been something in here I missed. Uh, I'm not sure. So if there was something that you guys uh, read here that maybe I didn't talk about, well, let's talk about that during a live stream or, you know, pop a comment uh, down below with your thoughts on it. And uh, that'll do it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.